astrophotography. In this video I'm going to show you all the gear that I use on just a normal astro shoot. I'll start with the bag and what's, what I keep in the bag on any night and then I'll show you all the accessories I sometimes take along with me, depends what I shoot. So we'll start in the bag. So as you know I'm a landscape astrophotographer so I don't do too much deep sky things and with telescopes so all my gear is basically landscape photography and this is what I normally use on any sort of astro shoot. So Sony A7S, always use it, mirrorless, I've had it for a good four years. I'm currently recording this on another A7S, so I've got two of these. So I've got the A7S on a L bracket, and this allows me to go from landscape to portrait very quickly with a ball head tripods, so it's just very, very effective and easy. And it just helps me being on my toes when I want a portrait landscape, vice versa. Uh, so that's the A7S. Very, very good for astrophotography. The ISO goes really, really high. All my videos are shot on the A7S because they go to such great high ISOs, such as like 200,000. The ISO capability of the Alpha range of the Sony's is just fantastic. You can go, you can take pictures on really, really high ISOs, and the noise isn't that bad. And when you can join the A7S with the Samyang, I've got the Samyang 1.4, 24mm and this just opens up the whole world to you. Very, very good. It's really, really sharp. I know it's f1.4 and it shouldn't be that sharp, but when you focus it perfectly on a subject, it's absolutely phenomenal. I did chip it up in Aberdeen uh, one night. I just fell on rocks and I thought I smashed it, but luckily it was just this. They come in around about three, four hundred pounds just for the 1.4. The Sony A7S, they're about 800 pounds each for each body. So I have got two of them, so I'll show you in a minute the one that I'm recording this on. Yeah, definitely. This is probably my, my favourite lens, the 1.4 Samyang. Most of my lenses are Samyang just because I'm a big fan of them. I've also got the 50mm Sony, and that is just fantastic for northern lights and Noxus and Clouds. This just zooms nice closely into the horizon. This is 1.8 as well, so it's fast as well. It can capture good video and also it handles low light really, really well. And I keep up the top in this nice zip pocket my beast of a 14mm Samyang, yet again, 2.8 and that is absolutely phenomenal. So it's 2.8 so it's a wee bit sharper. So on paper it's meant to be sharper than some of the other lenses just because it's got a higher f number but I find it's kind of a nightmare to find focus on it because I don't know it just doesn't have a, a definite focus it just seems to just be infinity focus everywhere. Focus it on like a distant farmhouse or street light or car light but the focus is not the best in this, but probably captured most of my best images with this. It's brilliant for northern lights when you go up to like Norway and Iceland when the aurora is all over the sky. Uh, brilliant for tracking the Milky Way and yeah, just pretty much getting the really, really wide open shots. Not very good for video just because it's f2.8, doesn't get a lot of light in. But yeah, definitely one of my favourite lenses and it was the first lens I ever got. So for an astrophotography kit. So a Samyang 14mm 2.8 is definitely on the list. I think it's very, very famous in the astrophotography industry. And they come in at about, what did I pay for this? It was a bit, a bit cheaper, but 250, 300 just for that lens. The 50mm lens, that was really cheap. That was only about 120 off of Amazon. So that's sort of the lenses. I'll jump to my phone and I'll record what I'm recording this on. So what I'm recording this video on is my other Sony A7S and my Samyang, yet another one. You can tell I'm a fan of Samyang. It is the 20mm 1.8 and it is unbelievable. It's really, really good, nice and sharp. Really good because the infinity ring uh, just snaps into infinity so you don't have to play about with focus. You just take it all the way to one side of the, the slide pretty much and it just clicks and it can't go further and that's it, basically an infinity. Absolutely phenomenal lens. You can record really good video on that as well because it's f1.8 and it gets really a lot of detail uh, in the night sky with the noise capability just because it allows so much light so it's another real favourite I normally do my panoramas with this lens uh, just because it's nice and wide open and it's nice and fast as well so my microphone just to record my myself on it it's just a, a road oh, I can't remember oh no it's not an Andy sign uh, microphone just got that off Vamza, of nothing to fancy to, to that. But yeah, this is my other Sony A7S. This one's been a bit battered and bruised over the years. This was the first one I got, and then I upgraded to the one in the bag, the second one. 
Uh, this one, the, the, the screen sort of is a bit loose, so I need to somehow just be careful with that. But yeah, this is my first Sony A7S. I normally just use this for video, and then the one mounted to my L bracket is the one I use for oh, obviously taking the pictures. But yeah, so that's the other gear tripod. Is This one's just a basic one that I got off of Curry's Vail one. Uh, it's, it was about 15 quid and it's done me ever since. Taken it up to Norway, I've left it in a fjord over overnight and it was frozen stiff solid once uh, and it's still withstanding so very very good tripod. Uh, I'll switch back to the good camera and tell you about my main tripod. So my main tripod is this called the Viking. Uh, I got it off of just a, a local photography shop in Perth and it's just an absolute beast. It was about £100 and it's an absolute just tank. It can do different attachments, I'll get into that later. So it's just made for ball head, but you can attach different things onto it as well. But yeah, it's just normal clips, nothing too fancy. And it's just an absolute brute of a tripod. Obviously you need stability when you're doing long exposures. So now I'll go into like the accessories that I use that I keep in the bag. So in my bag, um, obviously lenses and stuff are in the front. I've got spare batteries. The Sony Alpha range of cameras are not very good for battery life. So I always have a few spares, I've got three, four, five, so I've got five fully charged batteries every night and I normally go through half of them, <laughs> it just depends how cold it is and what I'm shooting. Uh, so that's the lenses, some lens cloths just chucked about somewhere, they keep getting, they keep changing their, their area. Head torch, what I use, obviously it's dark when I'm photographing, so it's just a, you know, it's got some at the side and then a main beam in the front. Uh, it's just like a trespass one, just from my local shop. Very, very bright. The brighter the better. It's not got a red light on it. I know some astrophotographers have red light. It's good when you're with other astrophotographers just because it keeps your night vision. But I'm normally alone when I do my photography, so it doesn't matter me too much. Uh, in this top pocket, I've got hand warmers. Now, I normally use hand warmers, obviously, to keep my hands and feet cold, put them in my gloves and my socks. But sometimes if I'm doing a time lapse, I would wrap, I'll show you, so say the lens is taking a time lapse, I would wrap one of the hand warmers like that, just with an elastic band, and that keeps the frost and the dew off sometimes, that works really well, not, not very cost effective because, you know, they're not renewable, but uh, very good, so if your hands and feet are cold when you're out at night, it makes you last much longer and enjoy the night much more. Spare batteries for my intervalometer that I'll show you and the elastic bands to attach things and uh, keep it handy. So in this pocket is where I keep most of my goodies, my accessories. So here is the intervalometer, so I've obviously got spare batteries for that. Matches the Sony, so it just plugs into the Sony's. This is how I do the time lapses and long exposures. Uh, the Alan Wallace Star Glow filter, this just makes the constellations pop and glow such as Orion and the Plough, so you know, you, I just hover this over the lens and that makes the stars pop and glow. Highly recommend getting something like this. I know uh, other manufacturers like NISI, Nissi, or whatever you pronounce them, they do a similar thing and definitely get them because it just makes your images, your astro images pop so much more. So, yet again, more lens cloths just to um, make sure my lenses are nice and clean when I take photograph. This is one of the adapters I use to connect my Sigma 150 to 600, so I'll get into that later. That just connects. Uh, I've normally got chargers, so if I'm out for a while or I'm out travelling or something, I uh, always keep like a battery charger. This just connects into any sort of USB socket. I normally have a, a phone charger with me, you know, one of those brick phone chargers. So I can just click that into a phone charger, put batteries in there, and it charges on the go in the field, so it's very handy, especially sh shooting with Sony. Um, and then I've got SD cards, which I keep in this nice wee case. I realised that the more SD cards you've got the better, just because I shoot a lot of videos and time lapses and obviously pictures and personal stuff as well, so the more SD cards you need, the better, because they just fill up so fast and for processing wise you want to keep them all separate and stuff. Uh, so just, I normally just go for 32 gigabytes, so I'll pop them back in the bag. The bag as well, it's a low pro. It's one of these bags that I've never had any problems with. I bought this, I don't know how good, well before like 
before COVID, a good five, six years ago, and it still just acts brand new. And I've never had any issues with it. I could probably just sell it for full price, just because there's nothing wrong with it. As long as you take good care of your bags and stuff, they'll never get damaged or that. As you can see, it's very good quality. Holds just the right amount of stuff for me. And um, yeah, love it, nice and comfy. And we'll move on to the accessories. Out for the accessories. We've already looked at the tripod. My nice big sturdy tripod. Uh, go for this. So this is, as I showed you just earlier, the adapter for my Sigma 150-600. This connects it to my Sony, just because they're different brands, obviously. Uh, this is the big boy. So it's pretty much just, I use it just for moon photography. Yeah, the moon bazooka in the astrophotography world so that just connects to that and then obviously that connects to my a7s that was only about 20 15 20 quid off of amazon which is really good it doesn't have the electronic mode on it so obviously they cost like hundreds of pounds to have everything on it so this is just literally a manual thing so it doesn't have the autofocus it's just um visual pretty much through it but yeah i pretty much just use this for moon bazooka one of my favorite lenses it's an absolute beast, lovely and sharp. It's got loads of videos out there of me using it. This lens is quite expensive. It was about 850, so I had to save up a while for it. And uh, purchase it, but it's definitely worth the investment. Now, the Optron, the Sky Tracker. So this is the Sky Tracker. This pretty much tracks the Milky Way. And what you do with this is, if you don't know, have the tripod set up as normal. And with the threads, pop it on the top of the tripod. And you make this tube here point north to Polaris and that's the center point in the Earth's rotation and then this area here kind of revolves around it so if you point at anything in the night sky and this is aligned up to Polaris this whole motor will just follow that rotation so it's good for really really long exposures such as like you know anything over 30 seconds so when I shoot a Milky Way it's normally about two and a half minutes two minutes 15 sometimes longer so you really need these to get that good detail in the Milky Way so that's the Ioptron, the Sky Tracker. This last thing is probably one of my favourite things, and my most recent purchases is my 360 mount. And I use this 360 for obviously 360s. So what you do is pretty much get the tripod, pop that on that just like that, and then we've got a thing called a nodal rail that slides on that. You can attach your camera to there, and it just makes panoramas so much easier to do and they're just so much simpler. So this knob here makes this go round the tripod much easier and this makes it go up and down much easier. So it's so much easier to kind of film and photograph the night sky doing panoramas. Also use it for taking pictures of the moon just because you know the camera is so heavy and uh, I don't like putting huge big strains on ball heads. So I pop heavy gear on this just because it's so much more sturdy and just helps me get really good kind of precision when I'm moving at such a high focal length. So for the 360, it works really well because it allows me easily to kind of angle my camera up, take a row of 360 degrees, and then point the camera down, and do a row of 360 degrees. Plane going overhead, and also taking a picture going straight up, and straight down, which you wouldn't be able to do just on a normal ball head. So it's really, really good. And the 360 images are absolutely phenomenal. You can see them on my website and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that was about 170 off of Amazon. I remember that. That's for that and that. So expensive, but definitely worth it. And you definitely need it to get the cool results. And that's about it for my equipment. So it's kind of handy, kind of compact. Obviously, save them if there's no moon, I'm not taking that and it's just these sort of stuff, so chucking it in the car, when you think of it, it's not too much uh, equipment. Ashton photographers tend to take a lot of equipment and I fully understand it, uh, but I just like to keep it nice and light, so I can fit everything in there. So yeah, that's my equipment that I use. I'm sure I'll probably add to it eventually. The next lens I'll probably get for my equipment is the Samyang F 2.0 135mm. Yeah, that looks really good for um, you know, capturing the deep sky objects. Yeah, but I'm very, very happy with my setup and I would never 
go away from Sony. Sony is just the best for low light photography and Samyang is just unreal for uh, budget and quality. It's nice to see other photographers gear because it's just very interesting and yeah that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, cheers.